Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This time out, we've got a preview of a video that we recently shot on guitar tone. A few years back, I wrote a book called Guitar Tone, Pursuing the Ultimate Guitar Sound, and over the past few gear fests at Sweetwater, I've been doing a seminar on guitar tone. The one this year covered tones of the pros, people like Angus Young, Eric Clapton, um, Eddie Van Halen, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimmy Page, a wide variety of players. We talked about the instruments they use, the amps they use, the effects they use, what they do to create their sounds, and how you can use what they know and what they've put to work to create your own sound. Let's take a look at the final chapter from that video, which covers Eric Johnson. No discussion of guitar tone would be complete without talking about Eric Johnson. Eric is famous for his ears and for hearing things that the rest of us miss, and also for his attention to detail when selecting his gear and putting that gear together to create his rig. When you look at Eric Johnson's gear, it looks like he has a really complex setup. He's got all these pedals, a huge pedal board, he's got a number of amps on stage, microphones, auxiliary gear here and there. It can be broken down into three signal paths, one for his clean tone, one for his distorted rhythm, and one for his lead tone. Let's begin by talking about Eric's guitar. He's famous for playing vintage Stratocasters, but he also has a signature Strat, which is what I have here. It features a quarter sawn maple neck and lots of little details, like no string trees to, to help maintain the tuning, staggered, uh, staggered tuners to keep the pressure constant across the nut, and three very different pickups so that when you switch from the bridge pickup to the middle pickup to the neck pickup, you don't get an entirely different tone. You get kind of a progression of tone as you move across those selections. He also has the bottom tone control wired to control his bridge pickup, and that allows him to get a darker tone when he's playing leads. For amplifiers for his clean tone, Eric tends to rely on Fender Blackface amps. I've got two 65 Deluxe Reverb reissues here, and a Blackface amp like that gives him a really sparkling top end. It's a nice clean tone, pretty pristine, pretty crystalline actually, and he combines that with different effects to create a stereo soundscape. The effects routing he uses is interesting as well. He comes out of his guitar into a Deluxe Memory Man analog delay pedal, from there into a tape echo, and then into a stereo chorus that splits the signal to the two amplifiers. So he's really got a mono delay signal that's being chorused into stereo. Many people would do the opposite. They'd go into a stereo chorus, split it into two sides of a stereo delay, and then get more of a ping pong effect across the two amps. But this is different. It gives him a spacious effect without so much of the back and forth motion. Let's begin by listening to the clean tone of the amplifiers with no effects. We'll start on the neck pickup. Now we'll switch to the middle pickup. Now we'll combine the middle pickup with the bridge pickup, which gives us that nice out of phase tone. So we have a lot of tonal variety right there with just the guitar and the amps. Now we'll turn the two delays on. When we turn the stereo chorus on, the signal splits to the two amplifiers and we get a much lusher sound. Eric's distorted rhythm guitar tone is likewise actually fairly straightforward. For most of the time, he uses the guitar straight into the amplifier. He does have a fuzz face that's available if he wants to use this sound for playing lead or for a heavier rhythm sound, and he's got a delay pedal that he can drop in if he wants those repeats as well. So here's what the guitar sounds like straight into the amp. Now a key part of this is that tone control on the bridge pickup. I'm going to start with that tone control turned all the way up. When we dial that tone control back, the sound gets much warmer and it takes some of that shrillness off the top. Now when we add delay in, we get a very characteristic Eric Johnson sound. And 
And if we want a really heavy rhythm tone, or if we're going to do some lead playing, we can kick in that Eric Johnson signature fuzz face. <laughs> And add the delay in. Eric Johnson's lead signal path is actually very simple as well. Guitar into an overdrive pedal, into a tape delay or an analog delay, and then into the Marshall. The Marshall set a little bit dirtier than it is when he's doing his rhythm tones, so we get that smooth singing sound. And a big contributing factor to that is again dialing back that bottom tone control, which converts the tone on the bridge pickup from being very bright into a nice round warm tone. So here's what our signal sounds like when we're going from guitar straight into the amplifier. Now we'll turn on the overdrive pedal. And finally we'll add the delay in. Now the final factor in Eric's guitar tone is that he also uses post effects, and those are effects that are either added front of house or he adds them on stage by miking up his cabinets, running through a mixer, running through effects, and then running through more speakers that are on stage. When he does that, he might add stereo delay, he might add reverb, he might add flange effects, so there are more effects going on as well after the guitar leaves the amplifier. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from Sweetwater's upcoming Tones of the Pros video. The video will be posted to YouTube and Facebook in just a couple of weeks. I hope you'll watch for it, and I hope you enjoy it. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute.